from the great halls of their house, there are assembled three who hope to one day be the world's greatest driving heroes. Created from the cosmic legends of the universe comes our team captain, the Vision, Bill Fisher. Their soon-to-be Wonder Woman, Vicki Fisher. Our Captain Marvel and head flight trainee, Jennifer Scripchuk. And our Batman, the master of tools, gadgets, and all things mechanical, our mild-mannered soon-to-be billionaire, Alan Danvers. Their mission, to fight injustice, share what is right and wrong, to get you out of your house and come out racing with them, and serve all mankind. They are the Garage Heroes in Training Team. Welcome to the Garage Heroes in Training Podcast. I'm going to be one of the hosts for this episode, but I'm not alone. My name is Bill. Who else is hosting? Uh, I'm Vicky. How are? How is everyone? I won't. I'm I'm the only one here besides our guest, so I'm good. Yeah. But he can't talk yet, so shh, yeah, don't say anything. Okay. Uh, we have a returning guest. We have. Uh-huh. Uh, let's see. He's been on. I think he's been on twice. If not, he should have been on twice at least. Uh, we've talked to him about Sunday Cup. We've talked to him about Trek racing with NASA. We've talked to him about HBDs with NASA. We met don't forget NASA about Force. Weeks. We talked to him. I was getting there. I was okay. <laughs> This is why I say, do you do the intro? No, I'm just, you know, it's okay. been a day. It's just been a day. <laughs> and now the police are coming because I'm doing a bad intro. If you can hear that, oh. I'm not quite sure. Anyway, uh, <sighs> he uh, races for uh, support of his beautiful bride and uh, for force, trying to uh, be a force against cancer. And he just completed one of my bucket lists. I'm living vicariously, jealously. <laughs> somewhat patiently through him but uh, at least hmm? one of us is living the good life we have marlon <laughs> sumlin back with the podcast yay yay Bye, marlon yay no it was a blast uh thanks for having me back like i said i always enjoy uh being a part of your broadcast and podcast Oh, and uh, you guys always make it always make it interesting and fun <laughs> we try we, we we had we had the noblest of efforts trying to figure out how to do a daily podcast and we just didn't pull it off and, you know oh, you that's... guys are busy our life exploded time zones never help we forgot about that to take <laughs> into account. Mm-hmm. you had some weather well we'll get into the details of what happened on your end but uh marlon you just finished one lap of america in the ever so popular the group everybody wants to be in the sunday cup class i'm jealous very jealous <laughs> um we, and I'll say this, and this is the honest truth, we were probably the most popular group there, so much so that Brock Yates Jr. said that he wished he had 10 more of us. Really? We wish we were yes. one of them. Yes. So who so, was your, who all went out to, with your, uh, with your group? Uh, Becky Burden and Scott Robertson, they were in the other Mazda too. Ringers. Uh, Ringers. Yeah. Well, yeah. They, they're like the grid life, Marlon and Lori. So, okay. And, and which, yeah, I'm very fond of both of them. They're, they're really good people. Uh, th- then, yes. Then we had Bob Miller and Seth Lemke in the Kia Rio. Mm-hmm. And, and then we had Eric Cullen and Pete Lindbergh in the Honda Fit. Two Fits, a Rio. And and two Mazda twos. Two Mazda twos. Did you guys bring the energy? Uh, of course we did. <laughs> we did. So, this is your first event for Grid Life? No, nope. one lap. Oh uh, no, no, one lap of America. Okay, all right. I'm sorry. That's a, no need to apologize. That's all right. Vicky's no. had a long day. She's uh, she's working, working hard. So yeah, my my my, my job these days right now is a very very physical job. So I'm <laughs> pretty beaten down. <laughs> But it's okay. Ah. So, so I'm just going to trip my way through this. So, please excuse me. <laughs> no, no, hey, no excuses. We don't have to worry about it. You don't have to apologize. <laughs> it's all about having yeah. fun and sharing yep. experiences together. So. so, before we get too far into how it was and all the joyous entertainment you have, we probably just mm-hmm. in case we've had a couple one lap of America summary mm-hmm. podcast. But just in case the people listening, this could be their first podcast of ours. Who knows? Hey, okay. You never know. Welcome, by the way, if it is. Mm-hmm. Um, 
would you describe the one lap of America to get everybody on the same page? Uh, sure. It is a week long event starting at Tire Rack in South Bend, Indiana, and ending and at Tire Rack in South Bend, Indiana. Uh, basically, we went through several states, over 3,500 miles. There were 84 participants, everything from a Ferrari all the way down to our little Mazda 2s, Fitz, and Kia Rios. And each day? So each day, there's an event. The initial starting point at South Bend, Indiana is a wet skid pad. The goal is to see is get as be fast as you can and, and generate as many G's as you can. From there, we head down to Grissom Air Force Base in Peru, Indiana, where we do a little autocross. You have three runs to get your fastest times. So basically, uh, you after the wet skid pad, you're on for a two and a half hour journey down to Peru. Then you do your three runs. And then you start the long, long journey to the following track. So we headed from there to Carolina Motorsports Park. So we headed to South Carolina after that. Mm -hmm. It seems like you guys uh, may or may not have hit a few tracks you haven't been to, Marlon. How was that? Uh, yeah, but Carolina Motorsports Park. Uh, no, actually, we went to Nashville. I correct. Let me correct. I yeah. stand corrected. Nashville, Nashville Super Nashville Super Speedway. Um, that was that was a blast. It's uh, we have two sessions, three laps, time laps, and like a time trial. So the morning and afternoon. Um, so yeah, we did that, and yeah, it was the first time I was there. First time I was at uh, Carolina Motorsports Park, Hallett, Putnam, literally every track, and and Barber too. I'd never been to Barber before, no. but I no, I mean every time I was supposed to go, something came up. So, and but thanks to the help of Eric Meyer and Andrew Rains and Mike Joe, uh, you know, a lot of video and going back to some apex pro data that they had and shared that helped a lot as well so mm -hmm. but i still still have adrenaline blowing through my, through my body just from every time i think about it and, and what was accomplished you know by the time everything was said and done i think it was at like at 4300 miles yeah. all in the little mazda 2 which is 75 percent race car so there's no reclining seat no cruise control oh no oh yeah so <laughs> and as build that's, that's rough in it <laughs> yeah well hey it's like it's like going back to the days of old when working for the california conservation corps and california department of forestry at certain times Basically, it's like sleeping on the ground without a tent or <laughs> an air mattress or, mm -hmm. for that matter, a uh, sleeping bag. Right. So uh, speaking of, of that, so you're traveling all this way. Um, and I, I have a couple of questions going to line them all out. Sure. So did your group stay together with uh, or did some race ahead? Did some fall behind or all kind of guys those... kind of clumped? No, we as a group we stayed together. We were sort okay. of like the, like the Marines. We don't leave anybody behind, mm -hmm. and that's true of the entire event. Uh, you know, some people travel together. Some of the faster cars will go and fly by us. We just maintain a steady pace between eighty and eighty-five, um, since we all have small gas tanks too. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're more, more frequent stops. But that's so we stayed all together. And even uh, I forget we were coming from, I think we were headed to uh, Lanier, which is across the street from Road, uh, Road Atlanta. And we had a guy who lost the motor, but literally 15, mind you, 15 one lappers all pulled over. Oh. Make sure just for one car. So, it you know it's a welcoming group it's it's family once you're there everybody you know if whatever you need people get it for you mm -hmm. they try to help you uh rookies like me are called puppies I, so you, I, I, you, yeah. you do you do have puppy quality i do yeah have thank, to you. Say. <laughs> thank you <laughs> so yeah so and and i'm gonna reverse a little bit so when you get there 
uh, this, this great gentleman named Howard from upstate New York processes his own maple syrup. So your indoctrination as a puppy into one lap is to have some of Howard's maple syrup. Then you have, after that, you chase it with the bourbon of your choice, which he has. Mm. Serving a, so we call it the Corvette bar because it's served out of the back of a C5 Corvette. <laughs> so and it, so that's your indoctrination and, and you're welcome to it. At the end of it, so I'm jumping a little bit ahead. At the end of it, you go back and see Howard again. You repeat it repeat rinse and do it again yeah. this time then you, do, then you become a lap dog so <laughs> so now i went from a puppy to a lap dog oh that's awesome week. you'll always be our big dog so Yay. um <laughs> so um where did you guys stay along the way like i know some of them were roughing it um when they were doing it did you guys you guys weren't roughing it you guys stayed in hotels no, we, way, we sure. had hotels but sometimes we get hotels one of two o'clock in the morning and then have to be up and out by six, six thirty. Wow. So yeah, sometimes it's four or five hours of sleep, which me, I average five at five to six a night. So it wasn't really a stress on me, but when we had that big, big 10 hour drive. Yeah. So that was mm -hmm. tough. So um, when, when you're traveling and you have to do all these events, I'm sure they, they're almost like checkpoints. I, I'm imagining they're like, with designated stuff um everybody's kind of rolling in sort of along the same time and your guys are doing your events so i imagine all the mazdas and the little rios and everything are kind of you know slower horsepower and stuff they're all kind of rolling at the same time to do the events yeah like i said we roll together as a group so uh we basically all arrived at the same time together and as mm -hmm. always, we save the best for last. So, you know, we make our yeah. grand. Yeah. You know, somebody, so, somebody's got to bring up the rear, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, we made it, and we made it look good, too. So that's the thing. You can bring up the rear, but if you bring up the rear and you make it look good, that's even better. So, <laughs> so did you guys record along the way? Uh, some of us did. I think uh, Scott and Seth, they have this podcast called Track Walk. I think they, yep. they did one actually on scooters. They did. And they did that, they were yeah, together by wire, which pretty I, much, yeah, that's way too much coordination for me. I can barely <laughs> talk on the mm -hmm. podcast, never mind yeah. scoot and talk. So, yeah, there you go. So, yeah, they did that at the skid pad and they were doing that. There's some other live streams that that were uh, Tomo did that one, place that Tomo, uh, Tomo did one, was, yeah, Harry, him and Andy and Alex did one. He did one of us, he's you know, he introduced all the uh, at Canera. Carolina Motorsports Park, all the Sunday Cup drivers and stuff, and at us was getting our thoughts and perspective on things. Uh, and plus, there were some live feeds on Facebook as well, which actually I was watching a little bit on my way coming back from the car wash. So, and which I have to follow again. And and there's some in car videos from us that we'll be posting up. But uh, yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. We had radio, so you know, it helped pass the time on. <laughs> Very, very helpful. It is. Very, when we travel from um, the eastern Pennsylvania, we were uh, traveling out as a group to uh, Gingerman. We all yeah. had radios, and it was so much easier. Yeah, we learned that from doing Mazda Corrals when we would, everybody from Ohio, we would pick up people from Ohio, Pennsylvania, and then parts of New York as we had into Connecticut, and everybody had radios, so. And just the, the, the overall banner and then going and, and all the nonsense that takes place makes six and a half, seven, eight hours seamless. So mm -hmm. it looked like your transits weren't too bad this year. I mean, you had one that was 700, one that was a little over 500, and the rest of them were yeah. on the right. two, 300. They weren't, they weren't terrible. I mean, they, they no, were. just two, just yeah, the one for the one 10 hour one, and that's going, and that was coming from. Uh, I think we were leaving from it's either Barber to Hallett or Barber, Hallett yeah, to Bar Barber to yeah, you know, it was Barber to Hallett because when we were going to Kansas, going to Topeka, yeah, that was a haul. So, Alabama, uh, M Mississippi, Arkansas, and then yeah, so that was the longest. I spent a week in Arkansas one night, um, one night. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's a that's a good like joke. That. <laughs> that's yeah, a good I, joke. I, I, that that Bill consider that stolen. That was <laughs> real. I, I, that I, that I like. That works. That works. It was uh, it was. I was driving from Texas to Delaware for a wedding, and I just I worked the entire day. It was his wedding. It was our wedding. Oh my goodness, sweetie. No. <laughs> But anyway, <laughs> so we, we're driving there and I just can't make it anymore. I pull over in Little Rock and the whole way, there's like this series of, of tornadoes chasing after me. So I'm like, okay, if I get four hours sleep in Little Rock, I'll just jump back in the car and I'll get ahead of it because I'm going faster than the storm. In theory, <laughs> it seemed like a good idea. It was a bad idea. <laughs> so so um, when, I'm sorry, go ahead, Bill. It's fine. It's your podcast. I'm just here. No, for fun. I'm just oh, favorite, curious, favorite, curious. favorite track, <laughs> favorite new track. Uh, I would have to say Barber. Barber is like one of my new favorites. It is um, high speed turns, chicanes going back and forth, low speed stuff. Uh, Turn one, if you don't scare yourself, then you're not going fast enough. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> there's a big spider. Yeah. Oh yeah. And then they, they then there you get around and you see the uh, the buffaloes and bears. So that's another thing. So but you know, it, it's funny. If there wasn't a racetrack there, you know, you could see physically track. I've never seen a racetrack with waterfalls for one. Mm -hmm. Two, it's it's well maintained better than a country club golf course. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I'm, I didn't even want to drop a spill of oil, let alone even cleaning the windows with invisible glass. I don't want to drop anything on that because they might charge a <laughs> hundred bucks for a drop of that. So I don't know. Uh, <laughs> they'll, they'll clean but, it right behind you if you drop something. Though, there's, there's Exactly. So, uh, you know, beautiful, beautifully maintained ground. The track is phenomenal. Um, uh, the facility just went up in their classrooms overlooking time and scoring. That was just sat there in the air conditioning and watching uh, the other run groups. Uh, it, it was amazing. And then my second favorite would probably be Hallett. It's, uh, that was fun. That was a lot of fun out there. So, What did you like about Hallett? Hallett is fast. They're, you know, you have several different course designs and uh, – it's really, really fast, and I and I took to the track, took to it pretty immediately. So I think uh, it's a testament to what we do in NASA Great Lakes, uh, how we, we do our track walks and track maps and make notes. So uh, I think we're doing something right because uh, it was a quick study for me, considering I just walked the track once and look back and make notes and find all my visual references and things of that nature. So. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it was it's a great time, and it's even better doing it with a group of people uh, out there. Even the ones, even though I walked in, they were on scooters. So, but it was fun, and I have to I had to drill another hole in my uh, my belt to, because I lost more weight. So hey, hey, we <laughs> go. So, um, are there events that you do along the way before you get to the racetracks? Uh, no, it's everything is you drive, you do your events. And then once everything head up, uh, you pack up your car because you have to carry spare tires, jack, fire extinguisher, whatever tools you're going to use, cleaning supplies, a week worth of clothes, driving suits and, so, and things of that nature. We were so, I mean, we would, we can unpack a car in five minutes and put it back together and organize it to the point. The more we did it, the faster it got and the easier mm -hmm. it became. So, okay. Yeah, so hopefully no moving companies are looking for people because <laughs> I, I, I had my fill. So, so the moving companies, if you ever, if you need some movers and people know how to pack things, you need to follow one lappers and they can teach you. They can do the best mm -hmm. training videos on how to pack a car or even a semi for that matter. That's how good we've become. So what happened to uh, the car that had the engine issue? Did they have to basically leave him behind? They went, it's funny because everywhere you guys travel a lot through, and I'm sure you made relationships with people through in literally every state you go through. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. It's like Lori and myself, there's not a state we can go to where we don't know somebody and mm -hmm. always have a place to stay or has a shop. Well, they had somebody come, they got a flatbed tow and they came and picked up Howard's car. This gentleman actually did the maple syrup. And mm -hmm. so, so in, in order to start the event, he, between you and me, he went and rented a Camry and finished the event. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, the Camry from Mexico, yes. Camry. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Shh. <laughs> that's on the down low. Yeah, yeah, nobody knows. <laughs> Yeah, some mysterious Camry showed up with a number on it and uh, finished the event. So, yeah. Were there any other vehicles that had difficulties along the way? Uh, yeah, but everything, uh, mostly people got repaired. Some people, one of, uh, actually one of the guys who is, uh, who I've talked to before from Tyrac, his Audi was having, uh, with the pinion gear, had some issues. And so he had to limp back to South Bend, but he came back and, and he rented a car to finish the event as well because his son had turned 16 and he was granted exemption to drive in this. So that was part of his birthday present. So, yeah, and that, and then some dropped out. You guys know Mike Martin, right? He drives Porsche. You may know him. He drives. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he brought his Cayman the street very the street came in, but all the nannies kept, you know, thought that the car was things were happening to the car, so the seat belt would tighten up on him and things of that nature. So he just, you know, going to limp mode. He, he said he was done. He said he, he would have been better off bringing his race car. So, no. Oh. <laughs> so we had a few retirees, but overall, uh, you know, the, the attrition rate wasn't bad at all. So if somebody needed a bumper or light or something apart people would source it find it bring it to them and they were up and running the next day wow so it's yeah. like a supply it's chain along the way pretty much phone you know uh <laughs> thank god for smartphones and uh finding things online crowdsourcing with the, crowdsourcing with your fellow racers out there in america yes yes <laughs> Yes, uh, at One Life of America Supply, uh, you know, we figured out the supply chain thing. They should let us run it. <laughs> so so since this was your first one, I, I think it might have been even your partner in crime's first one as well. Uh, no, it was his eighth. So eighth he, oh, he, it's he, almost he, the same as the first segment. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Whoops, I, I lost what, track. There's, you just said okay. two people. I lost what track. kind of dog is that? He's not a lap dog. He's a what dog now? No, he, 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 he's a hound dog. He's a hound yeah, dog. Oh, yeah. That dog don't hunt. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, guys, you guys look like you were doing pretty well out there. Did, did you guys have a strategy? Because Yes, we did. We had a plan going before. Since it was my first time, uh, Tim Miller wanted me to get the most out of it. So I did all in that. I did the wet skid pad, I did the autocross, I did Nashville. Um, and then we were going, he would do the morning or the afternoon. He would do the mornings and I would do the afternoons and that. And then toward, uh, and he did the, when we went to Lanier, he did the three eighths mile track, he did that. And uh, so toward the ends, um, he ended up doing Putnam, both, because both, I wanted him to do both. I wasn't feeling well that day. And his plan was to do the dry skid pad as well. So we had a plan. We did it, and we executed it. Uh, we our, our biggest issue we had was uh, the Falcons we were running, the... the 660s. Belt, yeah, 660s, the belt started coming loose. So it sounded like there was an old... Huey from Vietnam inside the car. So, <laughs> anyway. so now you got all this road noise coming from three of the four tires on the car, and it sounds just just like a Huey, like inside in, inside of that. So, and that started on our way to I think that's it. We were on our way to Kansas at that time, and it was just it, it, so we did everything, put in earplugs and everything else. <laughs> <laughs> Sort of putting my helmet on, so which you know, if I wouldn't, you were moving fast enough. I didn't want to get cited for wearing a helmet too. So, 
Um, if we got pulled over, but we said we survived it. We we just pushed through and dealt with it. So you can tell Speak, everybody, Marlon, you were listening speaking to of pulled podcast. over. Did anybody get pulled over? Uh, I think a couple people got pulled over and they found out what we were doing. And the cops just said, be careful. Oh, really? Yeah. <gasps> oh, they support. Way to go. Oh, yeah. So as long as you're not doing crazy stuff like weaving in and out of traffic and cutting people off, that is most part of it's pretty cool. Like I said, we average probably about 80 miles an hour, except mm-hmm. for, as like Bill previously mentioned, when he was in Arkansas, <laughs> outrunning out uh, tornadoes and or prospective tornadoes. But and we were in the middle of a huge thunderstorms on several occasions. So and a good friend of mine, his sister is a meteorologist for NASA here in Ohio. So I would reach out. Hi, Emily Lloyd. So I would reach out to Emily and I would send her a message. Can you have an updated weather report? So <laughs> and she would let me know. And she's and she was a spot on when we like they said, yeah, it's gonna start about 7 a.m. and it's gonna go all the way to 6 p.m. 6 p.m. is gonna get really crazy. So it's gonna be really intense, which is the time we were leaving. So we're on the road. And uh Thank God for mid Ohio in the wet because I can drive in any sort of storm they throw at me. So, yeah, but it it was crazy because you can just watch this thing starting to form a circle. And I'm just looking and said, you know, being a kid from California, you know, earthquakes, yeah, I've dealt with those. But the thing about seeing like a possible tornado or something, that's something visibly you can see. That's another matter. And I don't think they make ruby slippers in my size. So I wasn't <laughs> going to do the Dorothy thing. So, and I didn't need a house falling on me either. So, <laughs> but we survived it all. We did. We really did. So your team went mostly for the experience. Cause you know, if you were trying to quote unquote, win, you'd probably want to get more practice each time with each person focusing on it. Yeah, it was just yeah, it, it was just like I said, this class was created. There was originally supposed to be five of us. There were four of us. Um the competition, Becky and Scott, yeah, they dominated and we knew that it would be close. So um but when you have me doing this and everything else, it was it was fun. We all we wanted to do like our number was 79. We just wanted to finish higher than our number, mm-hmm. which everybody did. But the most, probably the most phenomenal thing is, is that Becky and her two went over one G on the skid pad. Yeah, we, I don't know how they did that. Yeah, the first we one. were, yeah, on the dry one. Yeah, the wet day, you know, the wet, you're not going to come close to that. But on the last day, Tim moved those up six spots and we... Out of 82 cars, I think we we finished 43rd. I think mm-hmm. Becky was a few spots and Scott were uh, ahead of us because we, Tim pulled off a not 0.976, so we were close to that 1G thing. Yeah. And uh, But all of our cars finished in the middle of Porsches, Ferraris, lotuses camaros and you know we we outperformed a lot of cars that are little 90 to 100 horse wheel horsepower cars you know we held our own so you know we weren't afraid of anybody or anything and like i said we were the darling of, we were the darling of the event every place we went it was like you guys can do this in these cars yeah you can do this in any car but we can do it anybody can do it so i've got a question you okay you've got cars out there that the price of your car is less than the taxes they pay on their car yeah you've got cars where your horsepower is less than their drivetrain loss horsepower let let me let me put it to you uh, let me simplify for people who who i'm gonna just give a real simple explanation we our cars have less torque than the torque wrench we use to tighten our lug nuts. That's true. So that's 80, that's 85 to 90 foot pounds of torque. So we're below that. Yep. Yep. So you've got very nice cars, some, some very special hardware out there. 
how did Scott come in second on the wet skid pad overall? <laughs> Scott is extremely talented. Um, he and Becky, you know, they, they do what we do at NASA Great Lakes. They utilize data. They figure it out. They get out there. They walk it. They figure it out. They look for certain things. And uh, that information was shared with everybody else. Uh, you have to go out there with a you know, take no prisoners attitude, but have fun. And, they did. and I think, and then they did. I think if you can just go out and enjoy yourself, there's no pressure to perform. You already know you're in a car that has 100 horsepower, right? So you're not going to be a world beater, but you t- you maximize the potential of your ability as a driver and maximize the potential of the car. That's what that's what you do. And it's like you know, Lori had this saying: it's not it's not where you finish, but it's how you finish. So were you moving forward? Were you getting better as a gun? Or did you move up? Where you focused on just getting better time after time, lap after lap. And uh, all four of those cars did that. And all eight of us drivers did that. And I saw a lot of force stickers out there in the, on vehicles shared amongst all your friends. I, you know, force is near and dear to my heart. And having, as soon as I put that on one lap of America, people started making donations. Uh, some people, uh, just like, can I have one? So spending time looking for people trying to get these stickers on the cars and some people said, well, we won't, they'll stay on the car for a whole year or even longer. Even Randy Popes, uh, sought us out and cause he didn't know Lori had passed and I did. And he says, you know, he signed her car and he says, can I have a sticker for the car? The owner of the car, Enrique came over and he's been battling cancer and stuff. He says, you know, they were raising money for the American Cancer Society. So, you know, it was, we both had the same goal in mind and stuff. So when it came to that and, you know, Becky and Scott, they had some for brain cancer and Brock Yates is for foundations for Alzheimer's. Everybody pulled together to help everybody's individual charities and represent them well. Um, I'm always happy to know that um, people who never met her, met Lori, wanted them, wanted her to be on the car when they read her story and what she endured. And I think it it helped a lot of different people. I know Force is happy about it because her legacy continues, her mission continues, um, the strength and her... uh, Positive mental attitude, you know, that got us through. So I didn't, you know, I wasn't complaining. Oh, God, I got to drive on these crappy tires and stuff. Lori would just say, PMA, you know, positive mental attitude. You're already here. Just keep moving forward. And that stayed in my head and in my heart through this entire journey that it's about spreading that awareness one car at a time, one track at a time, one race at a time. And to have those 25, you know, almost a third of the field represent, have her on the car meant so much to me. And even we had some people came up and they said, well, can I have one of those? Can I have one of those? Uh, and uh, put on the cars. And it, 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 it was well worthwhile. If, even if I just went there as a, just as a transport driver, that it still would have been the same experience for me because it was just – about having that experience doing it. You know, Lori and I were supposed to do it together, but physically she wasn't there, but spiritually she was the entire time. So uh, we shared it, but just in a different way. No need to I don't know how to keep going, but I'm going to try. Um, so are you hooked, Marlon? Is this the first of many? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, so maybe the three of us can do something. Yeah. Or, you know, I think Eric Meyer is, they, he and Mike Joe were supposed to do it this year, but I think that, you know, life gets in the way sometimes. So, it did. Uh, yeah, so I think they live vicariously through me. And, uh, but yeah, I will definitely, definitely, I'm, I'm going back next year. It, it's, 
I don't know what in yet. Yep. Uh, unfortunately, the force car well, is going to be fully caged, so she's going to be home. So we'll find, maybe we'll find some other little B spec car that is not. Mm-hmm. We'll, we'll call it a bit of B-spec and training. So we just do a couple mm-hmm. of bulldogs and stuff and then sure. air conditioning and uh, reclining seats. <laughs> yes. <laughs> to do that. So that's so, but I'm definitely doing it. I, I, I've drank the Kool-Aid. Um, like I said, it was just, just a phenomenal experience that uh, just the relationships and the new family members that have come in and just, you know, everybody's reaching out and being friends on Facebook and social media, keeping up on um, one another and that. So, you know, after decompressing and everything, and looking back and says, you know, you basically, you know, I, I saw a lot of me and Lori, like you and Vicky, uh, Scott and uh, Becky, there were a lot of husbands and wives doing this as well. Mm-hmm. And, and to see that, and just to be able to share something like that over several days in a car doing things that you love and that you're passionate about. You know, the whole spirit of the event was about that. And, and Brock Gates Jr. is just one hilarious guy. I told him, yeah, I love this so much. You know, I said, I, when I retire and come work for you, he looked at me and says, well, then there'll be two crazy damn fools in, the, in this thing. So, Fantastic. but. Yeah, it's a blast, and I highly recommend that you guys do it. You just bring the whole garage heroes in training. You just <laughs> bring as many cars and many people as you can, and I guarantee you, it, it it's Christmas and yeah, it was like Christmas. You know, every day was like opening a new present. We, it's we it's heard, on the list. We, okay. we heard about the uh, Sunday Cup class, and I bought a car the next day, and oh my, that, and didn't get it ready in time. <laughs> no, we're still ah. on the lift. Still on the lift. We're we're completely okay. uh, we're completely doing the suspension on it. So, just, cool. uh, Sunday Cup and B Spec Racing. We'll we'll be doing that shortly. So yeah, we will. All good. That, it's going to end up in the Lemons Rally first, though. So I already yeah, got a. a I already have a. Uh, yeah, well. Not first. It'll end up in the Lemons Rally, but date wise, it'll be at uh, Sunday Cup before that. Which oh, one? Yeah. Which one? Uh, well, one's um, in July and one's in August. The Lemons Rally's not till October. So. Oh, so so that wasn't on my. <laughs> it wasn't on my checklist. It wasn't it on my list. It is. That's no, why you keep saying we got plenty of time. I'm like, no, we don't. No, we don't. <laughs> yeah, we're trying to get it off the lift, so yeah, we'll it's been there. it's been a little difficult. <laughs> yeah, right, so, so Marlon, you're no longer a guppy or a puppy, I guess. Okay. <laughs> yep. Yeah, if they had a fish thing, yeah, I, I would be a guppy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Any tips, anything you learned, anything uh, you give to somebody who's looking at their first one like uh, us? Yeah. <laughs> what I would do is, no, two, just have a plan and execute it for one. Um, if you guys travel enough to know, like you said, you do the thing with the radio and stuff like that, but being organized, having all your stuff together and knowing where it fits and where it won't fit helps a great deal. Um, but the main thing is like, what, even when I say about whether time trials, will to will racing, or even HPD, go there with the intention of having fun. And everything, if you do it in, in a relaxed way, and just not take it so seriously, like, you know, win at all costs, it becomes an amazing event. It is the best way I found to do it. And, you know, if you guys go in and we're there, even though you guys will be puppies at the time, you'll have enough people that will get you, get you through the process, help you in any way, shape or form. Um, if it's a familiar track and you have data, just go back to it. Uh, and look at it. And I know you guys have notebooks of track maps and notes. Yes, because I know, I'm I know you do. The exactly. best. Yeah, well, we. I've seen it, and I've seen uh, you guys and your whole, whole entire team execute things and uh, and just pull off. You know, just even even a pit race and the AER. Seeing you guys are just how well organized and uh, determined you are to win. So and to put on a good showing, which you guys always do. So 
And uh, that's all I would recommend because people will help you get through it. It's no doubt in my mind. The timing staff, Brock Yates Jr. staff is phenomenal from registration to timing to just when you're out there uh, on grid waiting to go by, they, you know, they keep you entertained. uh, And, you know, you, you really probably end up needing to have like a program and get all the players involved just to keep track of all the names that (laughs) of people that you'll never forget in life just because of this experience. So, Hmm. but the main thing is have fun. Always do. Mm-hmm. And, and keep Enjoy that the process go fast, and the go finish fast. ends up doing what it is. Yep. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. Yeah, I'm that's looking it. I'm looking to go give it a run. It would be good. Oh, yeah. It, it it's I, I think it's it's a it's I think it's just a great way to see all a lot of new tracks and go through and, and do it with a group of people. Uh, that have a common bond, and mm-hmm. once you build that, and once you have that, it's it's every year it gets, it strengthens because mm-hmm. it, oh yeah, you were here last year, you drove the Seneca, I remember you. Ah. And this here and all this, and you know, and that's the thing: are you coming back? Are you coming back? Yes, I'm coming back. Race you know, people are uh, the best people; they really. I are. It, well, a lot of people don't understand the camaraderie of what we do. Mm-hmm. Um, with NASA, Chan, or anybody else. Uh, it's just, you know, people step up, they help you. I don't worry about, you know, here I am out in a driving suit in a garage and stuff. So my pants, keys, phone, wallet are all out in the open and I still have everything. Mm-hmm. I can't even do that. I can go out in my front yard and actually leave that stuff there and I wouldn't see it. Mm-hmm. So it wouldn't be there. But at a track, I've never had any incidents. Uh, you know, hey, I need a jack. Hey, do you have brake fluid? Do you need this? Do you need that? Can you give me this? Do you know where I can get this? Yeah. You, somebody, you know, these guys that they came in uh, Toyota, they drove they drove all the way from uh, Colorado, didn't even have an entry, mm-hmm. drove over a thousand miles and Brock let them in. And and they got voted last remaining car. They brought a spare engine wow. and transmission on a trailer. They had a welder, any and everything you needed. And they ended up at uh where were we leaving? Oh, Putnam. Putnam. So and so they broke, they snapped an axle, but there was this team from Toyota that was there. Because Toyota, they had a they had a Camry. They had, uh, FR, they had the '86 there. So the whole Gazoo Racing thing that they have. So all the technicians and stuff came. They changed an axle and helped these guys and realign and helped them put negative camber in their car in all of 15 minutes. Wow! To get them back on track, so they so they wouldn't get a did not start. So yeah, that you talk about racetrack people yeah that's mm-hmm. that was it. that was it in a nutshell mm-hmm. so highly impressed with all that and, and it was fun like i said it, it, you know all the makes and models and everything but be honest it was fun beating a ferrari and a couple of porsches so <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's that there's that for sure captain's log supplemental Once you start racing, you'll start to know that the more information your driver can have, the better. One of the things that we found is that the Sentinel system allows you to be able to not only get your driver the information that they need, but also be able to share the information with the pit and anybody who's got internet availability. You can integrate your aim data. You can integrate the driver tag, as in who is the driver in the car. You can also integrate in your standings and who is ahead or behind of you into the dash, as well as be able to see flag statuses in case there's a yellow flag or a red flag or a black flag. Hopefully none of those, but uh, they do happen. This was developed by a fellow racer, former guest, James Candelaria, and uh, he is uh, seeing a lot of people using it in the SCCA, WRL, AER, 
and we are doing demos at our paddocks whenever we are at the track. It could be at a race or it could be at an HBD. If you're interested and want to come in and see how it is, we can give you a demo. And if you find that it's something that would be helpful to your racing, please use our discount code, which will save you 10% on anything that you buy. And it is uh, creatively GHIT, G-H-I-T for garage heroes and training. So hopefully you will find that the uh, Sentinel system is as useful for your racing as we have found it for ours. Um, so Marlon, in your spare time of doing everything seemingly at the exact same time, I have no idea how you do some of what you do. You are the unofficial, semi-official, I have no idea what your title technically would be, uh, NASA Great Lakes Trek go-to question guy. I don't know. That's probably not all uh, hard. Yeah, it's, <laughs> well, I'm fortunate because my teammates, Rick Norris and Brian Lindgren, we're all on the same endurance team. Mm -hmm. So we took our knowledge from running with AER and other events and along with Jay, we wrote the rules. I train all the volunteers as pit marshals. Mm -hmm. They are required to know, they have to know the same amount of rules as drivers do because how are you going to officiate a pit stop if you don't know what the rules are? Right. So that is what we do. And uh, we all work together with Jay so much so that National turned everything over to us. Hmm. That's how good we are. So That's how good our region are. So, <laughs> so while you seem to be working on everything in a variety of different capacities for a variety of different things, we seem to be working on cars for a variety of different things and a variety of different applications. <laughs> we have a car that we're trying to get ready to be our... Uh, NASA Trek race car, and uh, okay. Vicky will be using it in the HBDEs. But uh, what do we need to do to prep our car and be able to race it in a in an upcoming NASA Great Lakes Trek event? Okay, what's what's left to do in the car? You have the cage. Cage is done. You have, even though it's not required yet, but it will be next year. A fire extinguisher system. Or fire, 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 fire suppression system is in the car. Okay. So you have belts, you have yep. netting, everything. So you have netting. window net. Netting. Uh, so, uh, yeah, okay. window net and center net. Net okay. Nettings are going to be required then, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. 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 So we, we haven't you know, installed those, they're, but they're sitting right next to the car. That's okay. No, yeah. As long as we have them, we know that they're going in, that's fine. So everything else is... According to CCR, you guys are good to go, right? So what are do, so what do we are need you... an inspection though? Yes, you're going to need an annual, or okay. you can do yeah. If you're going to go wheel to wheel, as the annual on the track, you can do a regular one. They're going to do an annual. You know, Chuck will do it if it's one event. Just get it to him early, okay. and uh, just you know make sure everything's is according to the CCRs and NASA's thing. So uh, just treat it like a wheel, -to -wheel event, and you'll be fine. Well, we're pretty sure the car passes everything. I just wanted to make sure if I needed to get it inspected because we don't live close to where you guys are. <laughs> yeah. So we don't have a NASA yeah. Great Lakes garage nearby that we can No, just to. all I would do is reach out to Chuck. Okay. And tell him, hey, look, we're doing Trek. This is what we have. Uh, and I will copy Jay and uh, Brian or either Rick Norris, Brian Lindgren and Rick Norris, mm -hmm. take pictures of things. And we did that. Yeah. Tempo King did that. Take pictures of things to show us so we can look at things ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if any corrections need to be made, they can be made before you get to the track. And so you won't be chasing your tail trying to find whatever it is you need. You've mm -hmm. seen us at the track. I, I know. Right. I, so I nobody that. likes. Yeah. Even though I'm a, <laughs> even though I'm a dog now in one lap of America, I don't like chasing my tail. Ah. So, but yeah, I would just do that. That's that's the simplest way to do things, and um, you know, be proactive and get it out the way. And Gingerman should be a really nice event. So, so right, um, pit race is that what's that? Even pit race is going to be fun. Yeah, pit race. Trek um, so a just in enduro. case, because we didn't yeah. we didn't talk about what Trek is, we probably should introduce Trek to the audience. Mm -hmm. What yeah. would a Trek event be, Mister Marlin? Okay, uh, Trek event is a 
it'd be anywhere from depending on what we're scheduled. On the average, we do four hour events. Uh, our first one as an introduction, because of time limitations, it was two hours at Mid Ohio. The next one's going to be four. Gingerman, I think we did last year was like eight hours, and we I think we're cutting it to six or seven mm-hmm. this year because it got a little bit too dark. Right, it's a long day, but it's not that it, long. Yeah, it's the longest day, but it's not like we're in Alaska where you have. 24.75 hours of light and like 15 minutes of yep. 15 minutes of dusk, basically. So, and that's it. Gingerman's the longest one, uh, probably the most challenging one. Mm-hmm. Uh, we draw a lot of cars for that. Um, so even so much so that I even asked Jake and I have two, you know, different crews of people to be pit marshals so these guys can get a break and not have to literally stand up or out there for several hours. So, uh, but yeah, anywhere from two to seven hours, depending on the venue, um, three required pit stops. You must use approved five gallon containers. If you can get six, six and a half gallons in there, we're fine. You can do that. Just we just want the containers to be compliant. Right. Um, if you are running, you know, 200 tread wear tires, if you want to go to like Thunder Roasters, they don't can't run 200 tread wear tires. So we put them in the unlimited class. Same with uh, cars that, that are really high horsepower that could just, things out so we put the responsibility on those guys that are running basically would be like unlimited if they were racing mm-hmm. we the onus is on them to make clean passes and not because we allow people from hpd3 to run in that so it's basically a almost like basically having class you know being in racing school so it's cop school, basically. So you run, I think it was five or six events. You get your license after five five or six trek races. So, so is is um, this is this um just an event, like a mini event, or is there any instruction for people learning how to do enduro? There's no instruction. It's basically uh this we feel is just a, a longer since you, you can have anywhere from two to four drivers, depending on how long it is. Mm-hmm. So basically it's an introduction to wheel to wheel racing without, uh, nobody's going to dive bomb you, cut you off. So things of that nature. So you just learn if you come up through our system, you, you know what it's like to be two wide, three wide, the whole thing. All this is doing is tying everything from, you learn from HPD one to HPD three and it will also give you the tools to move into HPD four time trials, will to will. And usually it, on Fridays, right? Is you, yep, on Fridays. Yep. So it's just it's a great way for us to just tie all everything that we're doing with NASA Great Lakes into an event to where our advanced HPD threes and fours and even more experienced wheel-to-wheel racers get out there to continue to improve their race craft. And uh, that's what wheel-to-wheel is all about anyway, is the race craft. And uh, you, we feel we have a solid foundation and Trek just helps solidify that because the practical application from the drills to the classroom is now on the track and you get out there and do your thing. So how well has it been received? It has been it started off slow, but as more and more uh, people found out about it, more and more people going in three and the four and they wanted to do it. Uh, people volunteered and saw how it went. It's growing. It's growing so much so that that's why national, we have, we have really high numbers and that's why national turned over creating the rule set to us because we've worked out all the bugs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, you also, guys got a great program as it is. It's oh, also we, the, we, uh, yeah. the spot where the 
at least if I have my preference, I like to do the trek race on Friday and then focus when I'm instructing just on the students Saturday and Sunday. And I get there my driving go. done on Friday. And exactly. So exactly. So it's a uh, pretty entertaining racing. Lots of lots of uh, fun track time. Lots of good friends yeah. out there. I'm trying to talk Miss Vicky into it. She's HPD three now. We're ready to go. <laughs> yeah, do it. Do it. It's all, all what she's learned is just going to carry over to the trek race. Yeah. And a trek race is it's about consistency and having strategy player. You don't have you guys know that from AER. You don't have to be the fastest. You just have to be consistent and execute mm -hmm. your pit stops. That's it. And you got to make there. sure your car survives for the big ones. I mean, yeah. for oh, the yeah. full. For the full, it's it's a nice introductory, yeah. I imagine. It's a nice introductory to full enduro racing. Right. And at that and point, so, you just have to have your car survive. Exactly. And, and you become more, as you do these events, you become more familiar what the car's limitations are, your limitations are. Mm -hmm. And, you know, having similar like-minded people in the car, you guys, you know, we always... Think, oh, what the car's doing this, the car's doing that. What do we need to do to correct it? We're going to do, I mean, we're so proficient at rusty nuts racing. We can, we basically can fill the E30 up, change two tires, and do a driver change in a minute. Mm -hmm. Right. But the other thing, too, about the Enduro is, is one thing that you're unable to teach until this event had showed up is focus. Because when you're out on a track for an hour, hour and a half, your focus starts to wander. So mm -hmm. you're so you're forced you're forced to to push your body just a little bit more to overcome that. Because if you start losing your focus, you start yeah, you, it becomes you, you, it becomes it's a mental game at the same right. time. And it, and, it, and it goes back to, and, and I know you guys talked to Ross Bentley a couple of times on your podcast. So um, it goes back to mindset mm -hmm. and that's what you have to, to focus on. And as you know, we teach and, and Bill's instructing as, you know, as you're going down the back straight of mid Ohio, what are you doing? You're checking your gauges, you're wiggling your finger, mm -hmm. you're doing everything. So that comes down to repeatability and constantly doing that all the time. Mm -hmm. so where it becomes habit mm -hmm. and yeah as your focus starts to wane you know that's why we have radios in the car because if i can mm -hmm. see if something's happening in the driver i'm talking they say what's going on you you know maintain your focus maintain your focus mm -hmm. you, know, you need water is your cool shirt not working it's, what it's mental be? fatigue at the same time yeah, it is exactly but that's why we you know stay hydrated mm -hmm. stay focused uh, if your scent is, is within the next hour or whatever, we have people to keep a radio with him mm -hmm. close by, get some rest, take a power nap, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. get in there. Let's get your <laughs> mental focus going. Bill's, Bill's, Bill's on the podcast. We're all on Zoom right now, and he's throwing a th thumbs up because Bill is the queen of power naps. Oh, I'm the queen. <laughs> what is, what is on our queen? team. <laughs> well, no. All right, fine, whatever. I thought there's anything wrong with that. Um, <laughs> the, other, the other thing the Enduro gives you a really great opportunity if you're eligible and able to race in the Enduro is if you're going to an HBDE weekend and it's at a track you've not been to, you can get an hour or two hours more yeah. of track time and learn the track. Mm -hmm. So then the next time you're in the HBDE sessions, you can focus on the drills and what we're trying to learn and, and not have to worry about, is this a left turn or a right turn, you know? Mm -hmm. Exactly. I, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, Vicky, go. go. And again, if, if people that you put yourself on the forums with and you're looking for an arrive and drive seat, and instead of just going in there cold going, okay, well, I'm an HPDE person. I haven't done this before. Knowing that you've done this, is definitely a boost for people saying, oh, so you do have experience. Yeah, 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 sure, we'll let you in our car because you've done it for four hours and yeah. you have you have some experience. It's easing you into jumping from the HPDE scenario and then jumping into, you know, a, a real race. Or you can build your team right there from HPDE. 
Right. Uh, you know how close everyone is because you partner up with people and everything, mm -hmm. sir, in HPD three and four. So you you you, you have that relationship. And that's what mm -hmm. I like about Nice Great Lakes, even starting in one where everybody introduces themselves and, you know, people come up through the ladder and they usually go together. Mm -hmm. So by the time they're in three, they're doing drills together. Hey, you know, here's a prime example, Jason Scott and his Mustang. You know, they'll bring Robin over, they'll bring Jeff Henderson over, but because these guys have all been together and they, they in some way, shape or form, they either had them in the right seat or in the classroom. So that camaraderie there, hey, watch well, us, these guys, they're not going to, you know, they're not hard on my machinery and mm -hmm. I know they're going to take yeah. care of it. So, so you have that relationship and trust. So, mm -hmm. and I think that's what, why are we have, Real, I can't even remember of a major incidence of contact in any trek race that we've had that we've put on within the last two years. Well, so, if there's a, a group that's that's coming out from um, Great Lakes, and I mean, I, I think our closest track is Pitt. So right. if anyone is out there that's interested in putting a team together and running in one of these races, and we're, we're mainly lemons racers. It's just a fun thing. Um, but Bill is graduating up. We will certainly help walk you through an entire weekend of what an endurance race is to mm -hmm. shepherd your team. So, you know, reach out to us and see if we can match up a schedule. We will be happy to, to show you the way. Yeah. And we're the same way. We'll we'll help mm -hmm. anybody. You read, send us an email. We'll we'll, we'll get you, we'll get you up to speed very very quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, one thing I will tell you: just uh, we do make adjustments on the fly. So if you bring in a ringer, and all of a sudden he's running four or five laps faster than your best driver, yeah, we're going to move you up a class, or so, or knock him down with points. Yeah, or we do that, or yeah, we'll add, we'll add, we'll start putting you and giving you deficits. But just so far today, we haven't had too many issues with that. I think we had one mm -hmm. uh, where we had to do that, but I don't think they were personally sandbagging. I think, you know, as people get, as you get a rhythm, you start to get faster. So, mm -hmm. and that, but uh, yeah, if you go bring in a professional and stuff and all of a sudden, ew, okay. Yeah, he's going to be the last hour and a half. Okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> Yeah, we look for that. But just to give you an example, you guys know Corbin, our young 14-year-old. He won the last two trackers, the last two trackers. You know, I do have to say there's there's nothing as great as just hitting the checker flag. There is nothing greater than <laughs> that. You know what? It's track navigation going out is one of my best things to do. I love going out yeah. first for that reason because it's a crowded track and you're just you're starting to set your pace and you're starting to set your team. And right. uh and just hitting that checker, just knowing, oh, I did it. I made the checker. Yeah. The car made the checker. Well, that was like the one lap of America. You you look at that, the, the, you know, a little 1.5 liter motor in these cars, and it survived all of that. Mm -hmm. And it didn't have one hiccup at all. So, you know, you guys talk about Sunday Cup. The thing is, it's low cost, low maintenance. These cars are literally bulletproof. And and we'll run on one in a trek race. So we are, are both next year in a trek race. So we'll bring both of our little Sunday Cup cars here and, and show these guys uh, that, you know, we do our David and Goliath things with B-Spec cars. Yeah. Yeah. Well, with, with the uh, the one lap, you got to get 18 checkers, essentially. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. It's not a bad week. Not a bad week at all. So, Marlon, we... Uh... We always like to have you on. We love talking to you about all things racing and everything, but the, the truly important uh, aspect of your life and is your dedication to um, the force charity and, and trying to help everybody uh, that you can. Yes. And uh, uh, this is your opportunity to once again, make sure everybody's aware and make sure everybody knows how to uh, assist if they can in any way possible. So, Sure. Um, Force is facing our risk of hereditary cancer. Uh, uh, most people know from the previous broadcast that after eight and a half years, Lori lost her battle with it, ovarian cancer. Um, she carries the BRCA1 gene that her mother had, her sister. She lost a sister to it. She lost the mother. 
she was an aunt to it. Um, so it's prevalent in her family. But we, in our main mission, is to have people go and get tested and be proactive. If you can go out there and find out if you carry a gene, you can make a decision to, you know, seek care ahead of time. Um, one of the greatest things knowing is that uh, friends of ours, uh, his, uh, his wife had the BRCA1 gene, so she made the decision to have her breast removed. Uh, uh, and as she said, following Lori's story, she was inspired by that and even reached out to Lori. And, you know, Lori even to reiterate her decision, breast does not define you as a woman. Being around for your husband and your, and your daughters defines you as a mother and a woman and a wife. So that's what for submission is. And whether it's male, female, what it is. You know, force initially started with breast and ovarian. Uh, they became so good at getting their message out. So now it's prostate, brain, lung, every type of cancer that you can have. Um, if you, there's information out there, there's new things coming out every day. Uh, I advise you to go to www.facingourrisk.org. Um, Donate, even if it's $5, $10, donate. All that money goes, to, the majority of that money, 90% of that money goes toward research. Uh, it's, Force has a staff of 13. So it's not like they have a multitude like Susan B. Komen and some other charities that have to cover a lot of overhead and expenses. The majority of their money goes to research and helping families. That's why, you know, we involved ourselves with it. We have we have their logo on our car. Uh, we raised so much money for them based from NASA Great Lakes as a, their preferred charity, which I can't thank Jay enough for doing that. Um, even the ladies from Force came out to Lori's celebration of life. They drove, I had one drive all the way from Florida to Ohio just to honor her. Uh -huh. And uh, they honored Lori and myself, uh, with their highest award, uh, it's in the second year, and we were a unanimous choice. And as I said in the previous podcast, I would have deferred all that to her because I am not as strong as my wife. Uh, if I had half her strength, I would be wearing a cape and having an S on my chest. But we just want people not to go through what we went through. Uh, Cancer is is devastating, not only physically, but financially. And uh, we're fortunate that people cared enough about us to donate. And so we're held, we know we're saving lives. And every time you give a dollar, you're saving a life. So, and that's it. And, you know, I can't thank you and Vicky enough for like, I think you have one of Lori's stickers on everything you own literally so <laughs> it, i'm surprised i don't see one on bill's forehead but we can yeah. make it happen. it's a it's but, a five head the hair keeps going yeah back, there you go so. okay <laughs> but i can't seriously i can't thank you guys enough for allowing me to promote that and always being there and supporting us from like day one um we're going to do another big raffle again at the end we're raffling off another miata it's going to be wrapped like like the deuce is so it's going to have forces logo on it uh, we'll have a couple of lorries ribbons on it and um, a lot of our partners are stepping up awr they're going to be donating motor mounts and tow hooks and uh, we'll have a bunch of stuff from Mazda as well to put in there and nasa great lakes and all of our partners g-lock breaks everybody is that stepped up before they're they're ready to do it again and of course Darren Fimple and Midwest Miata Parts, who just got the car together and put it all together. And so, you know, two years in a row, he's donated a car. So um, I can't thank you enough. Our team with Midwest Miata Parts is a phenomenal group. Our NASA Great Lakes family is phenomenal. Uh, the Garage Heroes and Training people, I can't say enough about you guys either and, and all your efforts and everything you do, not only for Forrest, but me personally, NASA Great Lakes, the racing community at large. What you guys have done is is phenomenal. And I'm always happy to be, a, you know, to be on these podcasts to share with you and Vicky Bill. It's just amazing. Thanks. I'm blushing. <laughs> 
getting weepy. The, the queen of death is getting weepy. Um, Marlon, I, I think, uh, you know, from the first day we met you and, and saw you getting out of your car and getting out of your car and getting out of your car. Of your car, <laughs> of your car. It was a little car. <laughs> how do you do that? I know. It was, it was like one of those, you know, the Japanese origami. It's like, how did all yeah. that turn into that little thing and fit in there? But, you know. yeah. Oh, but, he uh, totally unfolded it. Ah. Exactly. And why did he pass me? My God. <laughs> anyway, um, you know, it's, it's been great um, meeting both you and Laurie, and all the Great Lakes people, all the racing people. It's uh, it's fantastic. And uh, if we can do just a little bit to help, you know, next time you come on, hopefully we'll say, you know, X, Y, Z cancer has been cured. That would be fantastic. So uh, yeah, that's what we're looking for. That's what we're looking for. We're losing too many people to this disease. And like I said, it's like a month hadn't gone by where we haven't lost somebody that's a family member to us. And like, uh, Lori and I always say, you know, family doesn't mean you have to be related by blood. So, you know, um, where your family come from when you need them the most. And, uh, you guys have stepped up, that's great lakes, Midwest, me out of parts and uh, every relationship we've made, just by being involved in cars. So when you talk about racetrack people and and racers in general, uh, there is no, you know, there is no better people in the world as far as I'm concerned. And I know she's looking down, saying the same thing, with her big toothy grin and, and probably a little laugh and being a little bit smartish, and she'll wholeheartedly agree. So, and uh, I'm just glad she's she touched so many, and uh, and I'll never let her legacy go uh just fade into the light it will never happen so until it That's will continue to if nope. you didn't do anything marlon that would never happen yep. so don't worry about yeah, that yeah yeah i'm not i'm not so and I'm you know not. what marlon i do always have to thank you because the um car that you can enter and anybody can win will be the only car I can add to our fleet that Vicky will not get mad at me for. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair I'm enough. glad to hear that. That's my, uh, that's my get out of jail free card, I think. Is, uh, yeah. All right. You don't have to well sleep played, in the bathtub. Sir. Well played. <laughs> Maybe. We'll see. I don't know. Depends right. how I am that week. She might change the rules. You, know, you never know. So, Marlon, always great having you on here. Can't wait to see you again upcoming events i know we're going to cross at grid life and we're going to cross at nasa great lakes but hopefully we don't yes. have to wait that long we'll figure no. something out just hey let me know uh where you, you know i'll come anywhere so that you know hope support like i said you guys are family so and our motto is family first so yep. hey if you, need, if you need crew chief help you need spotter help you need driver help just hey just send up a flare and i'm there no we we may draft you into uh coming on and doing some guest judging with Dominic with Dawson, you know, we could always have a second opinion there. Okay. Hey, I'm, but I'm down for anything. Take some pressure off of Ben every now and then we'll see. <laughs> Not a problem at all. All right. Well, we're definitely going to see you long before next year's one lap, but hopefully we'll mm -hmm. see you on next year's one lap as well. Oh, we'll, we'll be together. I'm sure of that. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. You have a great night. Thank, Thank you. you. You guys take care. Thanks. Bye-bye. <laughs>